We discuss motion of charged particle in magnetic field in this lecture. Consider a particle moving in an external magnetic field B. And let's assume the velocity of the particle is perpendicular to the field. So the magnetic force is always directed toward the center of a circular path. The magnetic force causes a centripetal acceleration, changing the direction of the velocity of the particle, but it doesn't change the speed of the particle. So to speak, the magnetic force does not do work on the charged particle. We have magnetic force is given by QVB sin theta. In the case, the velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field. Theta is 90 degree, 90 d sin 90 degree equals 1. So the magnetic force is simply given by QVB. And we know that particle is going to do you circular motion. So it will have central pedal acceleration. This central pedal acceleration is going to be given by V square over R. Newton's second law says this central pedal acceleration is given by a force equals to M times AC, which is MV square over R. And we know that a force is magnetic force, QVB. So QVB must equal MV square over R. Solving this equation, we can find that the radius of the path is given by r equals mv over qb. So the radius of the circular motion of the particle is proportional to the momentum of the particle and inversely proportional to the magnetic field times the charge of the particle. We can also define the angular speed of the particle, which also called cyclotron frequency is V over R. This omega equals V over R equals Q times B divided by M. In a more general case, if the velocity is not perpendicular to B, we can decompose the velocity into a direction that is perpendicular to B, which cause particle to do circular motion in the surface perpendicular to B. And we have a velocity component which is parallel to B. That velocity does not give us any force. So the particle would do a uniform, or in other words, constant velocity motion in the direction of B and the circular motion in the to in the surface to the perpendicular to B. So in general, it's a hemistic spiral path for particle moving inside the magnetic field. Let's examine the motion of an electric charge in a uniform magnetic field. Because the magnetic force depends upon the cross product of the charge velocity and the magnetic field, the motion is usually three-dimensional. We will start with a special case where the initial motion is perpendicular to the magnetic field. In this case, the resulting motion will only be two-dimensional. Since the force, and hence the acceleration, is always perpendicular to the velocity of the charge, the resulting motion of the charge will be circular. The force on a negative charge will be reversed compared to a positive charge with the same velocity. As a result, positive and negative charges will traverse their circles in opposite directions. Speed also affects the radius of circular motion. However, the time it takes is not affected by the speed. The frequency of orbits only depends upon the charge, the magnetic field strength, and the charge's mass. Returning to the more general 3D case, the net motion of the charges will be determined by the parallel and perpendicular components of the charge velocity relative to the magnetic field. The component of velocity parallel to the magnetic field determines the part of the motion along the magnetic field lines. This part of the motion is at a constant velocity. The component of velocity perpendicular to the magnetic field lines determines the circular motion around the magnetic field lines. The net result of these two motions is a helical motion, 
where the charges spiral around the magnetic field lines. 